All right, welcome. Uh, we finished uh, the last video looking at disjoint sets. We're going to talk about this last video, the notion of independence, when two sets are independent. So events A and B are independent. The mathematical way, the probability way to think about that is the probability of A, if B happens, is the same exact thing as A. What this formula is saying is that this B is inconsequential. It does not affect A whatsoever. So that, that's the idea here, this intuitively. B does not change the probability that event A has happened. Okay, so I wanna, I'm gonna use sports right here to think, to look at examples of events that are independent and not independent. So let's say you know, it's the middle of the NBA season and the Warriors are playing. That's one event. One event could be do the Warriors win, do the Warriors lose their game. Let's say one event is uh, do I, to Melvin, do I wear my lucky Warriors hat or not? Unless you're very superstitious, you can argue that whether the Warriors win is independent of whether I wear my lucky Warriors hat. Again, assuming you're not superstitious about this. So those two events are independent. It doesn't matter whether I wear my lucky Warriors hat to whether the Warriors win. I might think it's important, but it doesn't affect the game overall. But let's take the Warriors playing uh, an NBA game. And one event could be, is Steph Curry, their star player, hurt? Is he going to play the game or not? Now those two events, the Warriors winning or not, and Steph Curry playing or not, are definitely not independent. If they don't have their best or one of their best players, that's going to affect their probability of winning that game. And if you look at odds in Vegas and betting, that would affect the overall odds of that outcome. So independent events would be Warriors winning, me wearing my lucky Warriors hat. Not independent events would be Warriors winning and whether Steph Curry, one of their best players, plays or not. All right, so if A and B are independent, then which of these formulas is correct? Well, if, you, if, you, if you did go through the last video, we looked at the A or B, that went along with if A and B are disjoint. So then, using some logic, you might want to say, well, the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B, and that is true. So the answer here is B, but the, the, the reasoning is more important. So this formula on the bottom, this, this red formula right here, is always, always, always true. The probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A if B times the probability of B. But if you add the fact that A and B are independent, then we already mentioned before, that means the probability of A if B is the exact same thing as the probability of A. So I could swap this out for the probability of A, and we get um, this special case formula. So this top, this top um, box is always true. This is the more general formula, always, always, always true. But if we tack on the assumption that A and B are independent, then the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. So one way to think about this kind of simple example would be, what is the probability of getting two heads in a row if you flip a coin? Well, the probability of getting one head is one half, 50%. And then if you flip a coin again, the probability of getting another head would be also 50%. We're assuming that one flip of the coin does not affect the other flip of the coin. So you take 50% times 50%, the probability of getting two heads in a row is 25%, one half times one half. So an and event, I'll probably say this throughout the semester, is always a multiplication, but you want to be careful what you're multiplying. If A and B are independent, you can make some assumptions. All right, the question, if, the probability of A and probability of B are both not zero. So these two events could happen. Then disjoint events are always independent, never independent, and sometimes independent. Maybe we don't have enough information. So 
So if A and B are disjoint events, they both can't happen at the same time. So think about that. That means if A and B are disjoint and A happens, excuse me, B happens, then A absolutely cannot happen. So that's actually never independent. It's kind of a little counterintuitive here. If A and B are disjoint, then A cannot happen if B has happened. Right, what does that mean? If they're disjoint, the probability of A given B, assuming B happened, is zero. Again, because that disjoint part. But we assume that A could happen. There's a possibility. So these are not equal. So A and B are not independent. So this is, I think this is kind of a deeper question. So if, you, if this doesn't make sense to you completely right now, again, I suggest kind of look through this. Read through this again. Make sure this analysis makes sense to you in the next couple of weeks. And if it doesn't, uh, talk to me or a tutor or uh, someone else in class. All right, now our summary special cases. If A and B are mutually disjoint or mutually exclusive, also called disjoint, we could simplify the additive rule to the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. And we know A and B can't happen at the same time. And if events A and B are independent, that means the probability of A if B is just the probability of A. B has no effect on A. And another way to think about that is the probability of A and B both happening is the probability of A times the probability of B. All right, thank you.